people don't understand the scale of our sport. Why, why should they? But that's the beauty and that's what I love is, okay, if you imagine a double-decker bus, yeah. it's like jumping the length of that, sandwiching that in between a jump and you're jumping the height. Fair, people are scared yeah. to like, like, even when I left Strictly, I was <clears> like, well, I want to leave Strictly. I want to do other things. I want to grow as a person. People like within the, even mm. Strictly and other careers, it's like, well, I need to uh, stay with this because this is my job and I need to pay my wage and I need this, I need security. Well, there's money everywhere. There's jobs everywhere. As long as you're willing to work hard, you will be able to get a job. What would you say is the hardest thing you spoke about in that part? I'd say the moment I realised I was totally consumed by fear. Welcome back to Freedom Impact Trust. It's AJ and Curtis here, and we've got someone very special on the podcast today. Yeah. We're into extreme sports ourselves, we're into TV ourselves, and you seem to have done everything. We've got Amy Fuller here. Really how lads. how are you doing? How's life? I'm so good on this delightful, sunny I Monday know. morning. <laughs> Two and a half coffees deep and uh, I lot, feel you. <laughs> lots of smiles. I feel the energy. I no, <laughs> I think the one th I'm going to jump, I'm diving Just straight throw it in. in AJ, I'm, jump I, in. I, I love, get right I in love there. this. Because no, I'm, I'm really intrigued. Like the Ooh. snowboarding side, like. Yeah. I was doing my obviously research and getting into the background. You moved to America when you were 12 years old. Yes. What was that? Was that a family thing or was that to pursue a career in something? Or And then you're back at 16. I was like, what's happening? What's I was so intrigued. On? Boom. Uh, so basically, family out there, my cousins are in Canada, work opportunity cropped up for my dad. So we moved there. I had never snowboarded before. And essentially started school, uh, you know, British kid in America. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't really fit in straight away. And uh, there was this chap, young lad, 12 years old, invited me for a, a snowboard session at the weekend, as you do in America, <laughs> casually. I like, I like it. That sounds good. And I'd skied as a yeah. kid. So from the age of four on dry slope in Bromley. And dry then, slope. Yeah, a bit of dry slope. I hate a dry slope. And, and I always wanted to try snowboarding i remember seeing a guy go from the top of bromley dry ski slope to the bottom and he aired the little ski roller and i was like that looks good <laughs> that's sick yeah and prior to that i I'd, I'd done years worth of motocross so yeah. if you combine reading lines and transitions in a motocross track with a little bit of skiing and two years of being the elephant in the gymnastics class You've kind of got the perfect combination. So yeah. when I had this opportunity to try snowboarding, I never for one moment thought this could be a career. I just instantly fell in love with the freedom and the creative opportunity. Snowboarding to me is a blank canvas yeah. and you can go out there, you can ride, you can do it with friends, you can do it with family. And it's, it's a way of self-expression because there's no right or wrong and there is no rules. And I think that's what I fell in love with. Yeah, I think when you're doing them sorts of sports, like even like when when your brain's fully immersed in like you are focused on one thing or moving, you just everything clears. Your brain just becomes like zen. Yeah. It sounds like We're, very zen, very clar. The clarity is just such a good feeling. We've always for me been into personally. extreme sports as kids, so that's what we grew up as doing. And I know exactly what you mean by saying it's a blank canvas, and you can just you really have nothing else to focus on, bar what's in front of you. Yeah. What line can we do? What jump can we do? What what can we do better? And you are the first female as well to do a double backflip. Is that correct? First person to do a double in competition at the X Games yeah. in 2012. Which is excellent. That's mental. We watched the X, X Games. Games we like were the yeah. best thing ever. I get home, we put it up. I've been like watching it, like even because we did mountain boarding and the snowboard and all that. We like yeah. cross over like, oh my God, on X Games, they've just done this. It was like, it was the thing. Like, How think, was it? It's just so cool. It, it is still the thing yeah. in action sports. So we now obviously have the Olympics, yes. which was introduced in 2014 uh, for what I do, slope style. And then in 2018, they brought in Big Air as well. So in yeah, 2018, yeah. I went for slope style and Big Air. But X Games is the epitome of any action sports Do you still feel that's, that's still got its like, the X Games is like, you prefer that the over difference, the Olympics? And it's very different. Too so, yeah, so different in a way. The difference is the Olympics, you have 24 to 32 competitors. Mm. And there is the option for four people from each country. 
if they qualify the quota spots. Yeah, yeah. With X Games, you have 12 people that are invited and it's the best people in the world. So it might be seven Americans, yeah, yeah. one Brit, and it's just the best. So it doesn't Three matter Japanese. what countries, it is just the best are there. It is yeah. the creme de la creme. Yeah. And <laughs> yes. the day I received my first X Games invite, I was like, this is it. it How did it come in the post? Is it an is email? It like, is it like a, it was, a letter? It's just it? an email to one of my like <laughs> back backyard okay, emails. This, this, this doesn't <laughs> sound like, it sounds like you're you know in the junk. You, you actually won't believe this, right? So I think my first X Games was in 2009 and we were in the Tyrol Valley in Austria and we'd just done another event and we were driving to the next either training or competition. I can't remember exactly. And of all the places, I was in McDonald's yeah. <laughs> in yeah. Austria and I opened my email. <laughs> True sportsman. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And it, yeah, no, it's, um, for me, that was like a real landmark day because as a, a kid growing up in sport and particularly action sports, that is the dream that is one box that you you have to complete so yeah it was an honor to do that and then to do yeah the double in that particular event yeah, that was was really special it is unbelievable like for you when you did that first competition at the x games was it like a this is like i need more i need more. or was it like a was it a positive or a negative for you because sometimes some people go both ways with this like the pressure the did you realize it was sort of becoming a business then like in a way like you were this is yeah. your career your your everything by then well i think it started a, a, a little earlier than that so when i was in america um i started riding more uh, i rode in pennsylvania which was an hour and a half from from where we lived in virginia and i just totally fell in love with it my mind was consumed I'd be in science class and in physics they'd start mentioning distances <laughs> I I started seeing every opportunity to relate back yeah. to snowboarding yeah. so even in statistics doing GCSE statistics I was looking at spatial awareness and I was relating it back to snowboarding so I decided that was my dream that is what I wanted to fulfill but then moving back to the UK I thought this is just not possible. How mm. can I become a professional snowboarder, 16 years old, go into school in Northern Ireland? And my first week back at school, I had this one phone call, my mum. It was like the landline. My mum was like, Amy, there's someone on the phone for you. And I was like, oh, that's random. And it was, hi, Amy, this is Stina Brunkeldus, the Roxy European team manager. So for those that don't know, Roxy is like Quicksilver. Yeah. Um, we want to invite you out to Switzerland in two weeks' time to, for you to join us on the Roxy Future Team Camp. It's a, oh, that's epic. It, it's a crew of like the youngest up and coming sixteen year olds, and we'd love you to join. Oh, and that's I cracking. Went on that, and it, that one thing, that one experience, changed my life. And I went back to school to do my A levels, and I remember my uh, careers teacher saying to me, "Amy, uh, what?" Uh, what what are you going to apply for? What's your, your what are you going to apply for? What's your ticket? Yeah, for uni. And I was like, I'm not, I, I don't want to go. I, I want to be a snowboarder. And she's like, well, you can't. How can you be a professional snowboarder? I was like, I will. So I just stopped yeah. going. And yeah, put my That's so hard though when people close a box like that on you. When you love someone so much like that, you said it's your freedom. You've just fell in love with this. You're doing everything. You've had all these amazing opportunities. And it's, no, you can't do that. But it's not, it's not the norm, right? Yeah. It's not a normal thing to do. I can walk down the street now and uh, if somebody asks me what you do, I'd say I'm a former professional athlete. I'm mm. a snowboarder and now work in broadcast. You know, a lot yeah. of people still don't know snowboarding. They go, oh, the ski boarding thing. Yeah. Oh, the <laughs> skateboard on yeah. snow. You're like, it's an Olympic sport now. And I don't expect people to know, but... When somebody closes the door, for me, it's an opportunity to prove them wrong. Yeah, yeah. And I th I, that was the same thing. The school was my exact, it was PE. It, uh, the irony of yeah, being PE was the one thing. They were like, I was like, yeah, I'm going to be a dancer. I'm going to do that. And they were like, well, no, it's, it's not football. It's not rugby. It's not cricket, which was the, obviously the three main ones in our school. And I was like, no, I'm going to do dancing. And like everybody else was supportive. PE were like, they just like laughed at you. Eventually, I was like, of, of the yeah. only people, I was like, it's fine. I'll turn up again, yeah. <laughs> right, arrive in my Merc at the front door when we leave and it'll be fine and prove the point. And that was one of the things for me. It's always like, as you said, that, that drive to succeed and thrive is kind of the people that say no. It's the ones that like, okay, that's a good amount of energy for me yeah. to keep going. It, it's a funny one. It's like, it definitely fuels the fire. 
But I think when you know internally and you feel the love and passion and self-belief mm. for something, it actually doesn't matter what mm. anybody else thinks. And those little knocks along the way, they're just little moments and chunks of inspiration to utilize and use to go, you know what, I know deep down in my gut and my core that that's what I want and I believe it's possible. So I'm gonna do it regardless of what any of you think. I think that's one thing in the UK right now. If you like look at our industries, like even like camera guy, editors, like things that you like you need right now for what we need to do moving forward and seeing like all social media expanding, like in the, you go to school, what, where's the course for like editing? Where's the course for like, what, there's no adaptation, there's no forward thinking. It's like Not the exact you. same yeah. thing that's always been there. It's like, well, actually no, you should be, hmm really adapting your courses to what it, the future is opening up because content is something that's gonna be more and more like the growth in that sector is gonna be insane did you actually find talking about like people not having the opportunities and like schools not giving you snowboarding in england then it's dry ski slopes or it's indoor snow domes did you get it? supported yeah. by the government yeah. how like, did you as soon as it how became did... an olympic sport yeah so i joined the junior team that yeah. same year in 2007 and it wasn't until it was introduced as an olympic sport in 2011 ish based off my prior results yeah. in uh, world cup events and x games i then got put on one of the funding brackets and you definitely do get funding and yeah, it yeah. is incredibly useful and it would be great to see more of it but I actually learned so much from the core values of snowboarding and the brands and working with the likes of Red Bull and Jeep yeah. and Roxy. And through that, that has enabled me to sustain a living as a professional athlete through sponsorships and endorsements. And then through that, I've also learned how to market myself, speak to different people from all different backgrounds in different careers. And snowboarding for me, I would say, was my degree of life. So yeah. the sport <clears throat> taught me yeah. so much that I've taken into this new career. So yes, the funding was extremely helpful, but you will not get funding until you are good. Yeah, yeah. This is the That's problem the hard thing. Yeah. with, with the, you know, the funding systems. But it makes sense. Why are you gonna invest into something where there is no results. You need a result to yeah. get the funding. But then the minute, I'm not sure if you guys know this. So the top athletes that you will know names of, um, the minute you earn over a certain amount through commercial endorsements, you're then stripped of that funding, yeah. which is quite interesting as well. So it's a catch 22 really. It is, in, that actually sort of is in a way. It's, it's, I, sub, I understand well, why they do we, that. We never got it's... funding from sport because we weren't technically a sport. Yeah, yes. And we never got funding from the arts because we were not technically in arts. You sat right in the middle, so you get zero funding because yeah, it's not tough. Olympic sport. So, so you were just like, you just kind of get, the, you'd get like a laugh at you, be like, oh, we can't give you any money. Yeah. Oh, we can't give you any money. It's like, okay. Cool. We'll just, uh, just we keep had doing to, what we do. Oh, we had to go out and look for sponsorships. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Were you sort of the same? Were you were you oh, looking yeah. at brands, thinking, "Oh, I want to work with them," or "I need to work with them," or this and that? And yeah, that and I think that's a huge learning. Yeah. And I would say it's probably mm. put you guys in a great position as well because you get this new understanding of how it works, sponsorship and endorsement. It's a totally different network. And yeah, I I would write you know, the emails, I would make sponsorship yeah, proposals. 100%. I, you know, I, I, I call it now and it's the same now, even with work now, you call it firing the bullets. So you're like, <laughs> you send, yeah. you know, you want to work. I uh, love that. <laughs> Just send know, it to everybody. Yeah. You're going to hit something. <laughs> uh, you know, at the time there was a, there was a goal. My dream was to snowboard for Red Bull, yeah. but I messaged all 10 energy drink companies because <laughs> yeah. one is better than none. Yeah. Um, you know, three might reply and then you've got a choice. So it was a case of when I was younger, firing all of the bullets, but as you get older and you get more experience, it's about firing them more accurately. And that is definitely something that I do now, but that's based on such a, a wealth and depth of experience, yeah. which has been learned throughout my Plus career. Plus you've built your brand skill, and yeah. what you yeah. like the way you represent it, we haven't even got onto the TV side, but the way you are, have taken that from the actual extreme sports, the kind of Winter Olympics, and then becoming the face of it within the UK. Like for you, how was that adaptation, that kind of 
of being behind the camera but in a very different aspect that's for sure yeah i think so we have a a, a show on, on the bbc called ski sunday so when i was snowboarding still professionally occasionally you'd have the opportunity if you'd done well or in the lead up to the <laughs> olympics to uh do an interview yeah. for ski sunday and i remember in 2017 november before the 2018 winter olympics being interviewed for ski sunday and i just remember loving it i was like this is <laughs> awesome I i've made to, it <laughs> i want to do more of this i love speaking i love connecting mm. to people but i like hearing other people's yeah. journeys and i took a lot from that one moment and then competed in 2018 and i was asked to join bbc on on the breakfast show with Radzi, and Radzi's become a very good friend of mine. And I went along and I spent, you know, 15 minutes with him live on air, talking through the men's snowboarding, yeah. uh, big air finals. And it went so well, they asked me back again. And I absolutely loved every single moment of that conversation with Radzi more than anything, breaking down our sport, explaining it to him. He's brilliant. Making uh, yeah. it relatable people don't understand the scale of our sport why why should they but that's the beauty and that's what i love is okay if you imagine a double decker bus yeah it's like jumping the length of that sandwiching that in between a jump and you're jumping the height of it it's all to scale and um to have being the, able to visualize and explain and it and explain to it these like that to the that, masses yeah. that's a beautiful thing to do and it's very rewarding when people say now I get it or I enjoyed that. Yeah, or, so mm. I felt it then for the first time and I think I've taken a lot from my snowboarding and interjected it into the way I speak and, and share stories with people now on the broadcast front. But yeah, getting the call four years later um, to have the opportunity to host my own show on the BBC for the 2022 Winter Olympics was, um, yeah, a huge milestone. Were you nervous? Me. Were you scared? You know what? Curses. Actually, it takes quite a lot to make me nervous. Yeah. And uh, the floor manager came up to me. She went, <laughs> I've never seen you look so... <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or be so speechless. And that first show, Shaking. you know what? I was nervous. It's like, three, I, two, it's one. Though to Hopefully be nervous. she speaks. But, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you why I was nervous. Yeah. Because it was my second dream. I was in yeah. the process yeah. of living out my second dream. And it's something that I've thought about for the last four years. It's something I've manifested. It's something I care a lot about. Yeah. So to have that opportunity, it was like, wow, this is really happening right now. You know, it's crazy. It's really interesting you say like this second dream scenario. I was just gonna touch on this, yeah. I love the way you just kind of said that because people kind of put people in boxes. <clears throat> like it's like, oh, you're an Olympian, you snowboard, full stop. Well, mm -hmm stop end of it's like you vanish from the world and it's like well no people have different stages within their lives and different ambitions and i feel like yeah. for you seeing you kind of go from like the snowball inside because we were extreme sports people we love it we appreciate it, we understand how hard it is to do that like you make it look so simple and that's because you're awesome at it like you do it great the people that make it look hard well they don't they're not very good and then you go on to this like second stage of your career, like, and this is like only the beginning of this presenting side, knowing yeah. how long you can do that. But what would you say, like, even now from the podcast you're doing, your, your book, and like, obviously this is going to be one of probably many, moving forward, how do you feel like that responsibility has changed, that impact and, well, uh, like the name of the podcast, Freedom, Impact and Trust, like that you're giving to people moving forward, like, is that a different responsibility for you? Like you're representing a lot of people. Yeah, I think moving forward, I only see excitement because again, I'm following my gut and my heart and it's something I love. And I think the, the best part about what I do now, in fact, today, my podcast came out. It comes out every Monday. It's called Monday Mile, similar to yours. It's mindset, motivation and resilience. And it's been designed to get people off their screens out walking mm. and talking and one of my best friends is incredibly shy but she is extremely talented and for me it was so rewarding being able to give her a platform the confidence and the space and make and make her feel at ease to share and express yeah, yeah. her story 
That for me is extremely fulfilling. So moving forward, I see my podcast as a space to allow people to speak and to make them feel comfortable, to allow them to bring out the best in who they are. Yeah. And I think within media, there's a lot of outlets and a lot of them are small windows. When we have the opportunity to go on TV shows, it's exciting, right? You get a buzz off it, but you have three minutes, four minutes to make <coughs> impact. <coughs> yep. Strictly, yep. you walk up them stairs and you go up to that Claudatorium with Claudia and you, you have, as a pro, w- one sentence, if you're lucky, to make sure you get as much information in to <laughs> praise your partner, <laughs> tell people to vote, but don't tell them to vote because you can't do that. And then you're like, if you mess up and that that's one why you see second, everybody you're, pointing at the thing. <laughs> you, you're screwed, straightforward. Yeah. And as you're saying, like these platforms, like what you've created with the ability to, everybody walks, everybody talks and then suddenly you you remove all them barriers you remove everything and you have the opportunity to explain what you're trying to say whereas in our day and age especially in cancel culture like you could say one te- sentence it could be snipped up and put out like that it's like well no yeah. allow me to explain what my point is mm. so therefore we can all be on the same plane level again yeah and that's what you've done i love that you just have a sort of like a, a mother figure now on your podcast you can have people come in and they can just talk about what they want <laughs> do what they want and you're just like the mother hen there <laughs> it's a safe and comfortable warming space talk yeah yeah i mean it's kind of crazy sometimes you know some people you really need to dig and dig yeah, and dig yeah. but in, in 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 a friendly way I'm, I'm not out there to get anyone to help them yeah, yeah. open up. But other people, you give them the space and it comes, it's like a shitter gun. <laughs> <Yeah>. It's like, <laughs> brrr, yeah. I'm like, cool, that's cool. You know, also, if you want to do that, I'll just, You're I'll like, just I kick, got my steps in today. I'll just kick back and you can, you can do the talking. And um, I think that's a beautiful thing when you learn also how to share the space with yeah. people. And um, <clears throat> I think that's something that you guys are doing very well. And it's not easy, I think, as a host. And I think that's one of the arts to it is is allowing freedom of speech and space. And with that and and my career in broadcast, it's quite exciting, really. I don't know which way it can go, but I think the one thing that I would like to take forward is that um, there is a space where sport meets entertainment. And yeah. I want to be one of the people to, to bring those two things together. Yeah. Currently, sport sports broadcast is very traditional it's very formatted and then you've got entertainment it's loose it's wild it's fun and i believe there is a space where the two will cross over and i'd like to see more of that and i think that's what's cool about the evolution of of content creation now it can go any which way and by us having this freedom to create it opens up opportunities for us to merge what we love Mm. which eventually could end up you know with a show like you know like the end goal is to have my own show like why can't the monday mile be that's what i was gonna say this is just the start of it 10 years time five years time where where do you where do you see yourself like your podcast everything that you're doing now you're presenting you're broadcasting i mean let's go let's go ted talk level why not right if you don't manifest it you're gonna stay in the same place so set a goal and and work towards it and again don't be defined by that goal you might not get there straight away, but you might find something else along the way equally that you enjoy. So take a different turn. The UK is definitely missing that show. Like in America, you go to like, you have a sports bar and there's like, yeah. you got college ball playing and you got like, there's this excitement. You kind of have this energy walking like, this is brilliant. In I the UK, like we don't have that show where it's like, okay, there's uh We're more straight here. to the point sometimes. I feel like Americans are yeah, more like, flamboyant no, on the TV as side. Sports, like think <clears> of how many sports being played every weekend. Just, just think in yeah, the UK yeah, at lot. all levels a lot from a ball sport everything why is there not a show that encompasses all that talks about it that like brings them guests on young talent like you have all the racing series like F2 F3 like you only ever hear about your Lewis Hamilton yeah. or Mo Farrow or you don't get a that real charismatic show coming. which where that just brings every single what sport said, together you, yeah. the irony is you when you make it you get everything. You get your funding. You get your deals. You, you, oh, bloody hell, I've made it. Well, I needed this like 20 years ago. Yeah. Like, our sponsor was somebody who allowed us to do it from the beginning. It was their own personal money that did it, but it allowed us to say, well, you're going to give us this. We're going to sign an unwritten contract being like, I'm going to give my everything to make this possible. Mm-hmm. 
And that gave me the pressure in my head in a positive way for me to make sure I would become number one in the world. Because I know it's not just me, it's, it's the, my team around me that have allowed me that opportunity. Did you have to set goals like, like AJ saying then he wanted to become number one in the world, he knew what he had, he wanted to get there and do that and he became that. Did you have goals throughout your snowboarding? Did you like, I wanna hit that? then hit yeah, that always. or that trick and then that trick. And always. It's, uh, how did you keep yourself motivated? Obviously you loved it and enjoyed it, so that helps. AJ, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Fint. Yes, the financial investment app that makes investing easy from as little as 50 pound a month, Curtis. Oh, I love that. It's very good, I know. It is, but let's get back to the pod. I, For me, it was as simple as having a diary and opening it up and it's a blank canvas with a, a scale almost like a ladder and you have your top range tricks which you can already do but they're hard to access yeah so it's about working out how to make those top range skills accessible and that's working at the middle level of the scale more consistently which requires more work but that makes that top level skill set more accessible and easier yeah. and once you've then accessed that it's then about thinking okay well where else could i take this trick so let's use the cab double for example so if you oh, imagine oh. skiing let's use skiing backwards down the hill hitting a jump backwards yeah doing a 180 into a double backflip <laughs> so i was very casually said that <laughs> i was very good at the single version of that yeah. so my goal to be able to do the cab double was to do as many singles as possible in Nailing all, it every all time. different shapes and sizes in all different conditions on every single type of jumps yes. to the point where it became bo I was bored yeah. and boredom allows more freedom within the mind yeah. so the more bored you are at a certain level yeah. you're then ready and it's a feeling of excitement about taking the next step rather than it being fear yeah if you're not well practiced, that top range level is purely fear. Hmm. So you need to become bored at what you can already do to open up the next level. And it's yes, like a game. Yeah. And you're saying become bored because then you literally do not have to think about that one time yeah. that you're Plus doing you it. Plus you feel you've got all the time in the world when you've done it so many times. Yeah. You're like, okay, one spin, cool. It's like, yeah. well, well, I need to do two or three to at least like get to my To think heart again rate and actually, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's why I'd always think in the dance when we're doing stuff, if, if we were doing one turn, it would be trying to get that turn until, like you said, you don't have to think about that turn. Let's make it two turns now. Don't yeah. think about it. Let's make it three turns. Oh, crap, that's quite hard now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, then, no, it's, cra it's crazy, isn't it? The, the scale of progression. So goal setting, without a doubt. Do you was... do it through your life as well now and everything? Day-to-day oh, -day stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mine's, mine's like less, less less complicated even. It's as simple for me as getting up and moving. Like, movement fuels me it makes me feel good and i set myself a target each day of doing something yeah and occasionally i'll have a day where i i don't exercise that's quite well, rare for me you need to sometimes because it movement makes me feel good i don't have to punish myself i don't have to absolutely thrash myself in the gym i just know that if i've created that space that time that's my sacred time yeah. that i own what's the average day of amy look like then <laughs> and, uh, this is a hard one because I do know li like being in, in, in the public eye and doing different TV programs the, our lives are very up and down sometimes yeah. we have a free day sometimes it's I feel like I need to ask Kurt this question Kurt well, what's your average day like? <laughs> well, we'll get to mine in honestly, a minute I feel like you, you vanish for a certain amount of hours I'm like have you done anything today have you ticked them boxes yeah, yeah sorry back I to do you things, yeah. it's a little therapy session going on here I think it, it as you said it, it really really varies um, so for example today uh, I got up at 6 a.m., which was quite early. I got a run in because I knew I was coming here early to podcast. Hence why you've had guys. them two and a half coffees. Yeah. Um, <laughs> before a photo shoot. But that photo shoot is a real mixture of stuff that I will be doing for brands. Also, yeah. part of it will be manifesting things that I'd like to do with brands. So it's a combination of fitness presenty profile shots yep. and within that we're also going to get some action obviously so we're going yeah. on the boat we're going wake surfing and then my downtime will be this afternoon where i will play my newfound love which is paddle tennis yeah. and aj yeah. yeah. aj is actually joining us for that Ooh, paddle so, friends um, yeah you two you know, are yeah, a... we are paddle friends <laughs> yeah. and i love it i haven't joined in yet i have been to one game aj took me actually to be fair 
<laughs> I very much enjoyed it. It was good fun. Whereas tomorrow, uh, it's going to be a lot of editing, uh, reaching out to guests for my podcast, prepping for my day of podcasting. And then my day of podcasting can take me all over London. So I'm in Peckham, back to Chiswick, all over. So each day varies. And that's where it's so important as a freelancer, I have found to create my own time within that. So today, my own time was my 6.30 a.m. run yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and my paddle tennis this evening because otherwise it's very easy to be consumed by the job and constantly feeling like you have to be on it. You have to be chasing the next thing yeah. because you are only as good as your last job. Mm. I'm a firm believer of that. So owning your time, I think is so important and you have to carve it out. And make sure you have some fun. Like you said, your paddle exactly. ball, your run, whatever it is, yeah. keep, that keeps you motivated. I, I absolutely agree with that. I think every day somebody, well, everybody out there should do one thing that they truly love. Just yeah. about, it, no matter what it is, even if it's a tiny little thing, try and do that each day and that'll just resettle you, reground you exactly. and make you be able to work through whatever it is that you're doing that day. Even yeah. if it's literally just going to your local coffee shop, yeah. Yeah, sitting yeah. there, having a nice coffee and it's a moment for you. If that serves you, then that's what you should do. And I do actually love that to be fair sometimes. Too, a little coffee yeah. on your own. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> relaxing, doing nothing. Yeah. I'll do the paddle together. Just before we do Quantum the book, Curse, Ooh, I okay. want to ask one question more to do with the snowboarding career, like a hard question in itself, being very just competitive. You hit that, did you ever meet Sean White? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah so I, I, had to, I, had I recently interviewed him for, <laughs> yeah. for Ski Sunday. He, yeah. uh, that was like the first person which I knew in snowboard. On the video yeah. games. Yeah. 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 So, uh, he, uh, um, <laughs> he, he is a magnetic personality and he truly is everything that, yeah. that you see. He's a beautiful soul and such a great representative of our sport. Yeah, yeah. Go on, Sean White. <laughs> <laughs> a little shout out there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On that note, um, no, I was going to ask, within your snowboarding career, like, do you feel like you achieved everything you wanted to? I know because, like, the career's kind of gone now. It's kind of like, yeah. it's a hard question because I still have a handful of competitions that I was like, okay, I didn't specifically get the exact thing I wanted yeah. on that one. That's, you, somebody who kind of... That's a really good question. ...shelves it or doesn't shelve it? It's a great question because... It was funny yesterday, we were actually playing paddle tennis and somebody came up to me, she's just like, I love you, I love everything you're about. And I was like, <laughs> what What part? You know, because there's two parts. Yeah. Uh, is it the- You've got so many different facets. Is it the yeah. hunted, the snowboarding, the book? Is okay, it we haven't even gone hunted, Jesus. And uh, she's like, no, the snowboarding, you're just amazing, you're incredible, congratulations on winning gold. And I'm like, wow, isn't it insane? <laughs> like uh, that somehow I have created this aura uh, because I shared my passion and love for what I did. People think that I am a gold medal winning Olympian and I'm not. My snowboarding career didn't end the way it could have done or the way I would have liked yeah. it to have done. But I left snowboarding at the right time and I felt like I left it when I was ready to leave it. And that is because I fell out of love with it. I was totally consumed by fear. The minute you know and can recognize that, it's time to leave. Yeah. And I can tell you why I left. It's because I'd found a new passion and that passion was broadcast. And mm. I feel so lucky and so gifted to have found something I like equally, if not more so, that fulfills me on every level, that I have no skeletons in the closet. You know when people are like, oh yeah, but do you not miss it? Not at all, I yeah, did it, yeah. I lived out my dream. I went to two Olympics. If you told me when I was 12, I was gonna be able to have a career as yeah. an Olympian, I would never have believed it. I surpassed every single goal that I had or imagined I could have ever had. The girl next door from Kent that started on dry slope <laughs> is now a two-time Olympians, competed at the X Games, interviewed Sean White, like snowboarded for Red Bull, got sponsored by Jeep. This is not normal stuff and I recognize that. Yeah. That was normal for me and yeah. I freaking loved every single moment of it. But there was a point at which I decided I'm scared and I'm done. And I'm happy to now come away from snowboarding. It's hard for you to admit that. And Anybody just enjoy it yeah. and, and enjoy it for what it is. Snowboarding isn't solely competition. 
Snowboarding is a mm. creative yeah. outlet for yeah. expression and it's something that can be enjoyed on every level. I now have taken my best mate snowboarding and we can go and cruise around yeah. and stop and I can enjoy it. I don't have to hurl myself off a 30 meter jump and throw myself upside down twice. I don't have to do that anymore, but I've done it. And I can honestly say, I'm so happy I have done it, but I'm so happy to leave it where it is, park it and enjoy the other things that life has to offer because there is more to life than being defined by one moment. Yeah, I, there is actually, I 100% agree to that. It's not me, nope. it's not who I am. Yeah. I will always be a snowboarder, but I am not just a snowboarder. I think that's really important. Like people always ask like, oh, the, the British question is, what do you do for a living? It's like, yeah. whatever I say in that one sentence, what I do for it like defines you. So I want, well, I do a lot of things to be honest and I'm back and forward with a lot of other perspectives. Like you don't want that to be that one thing that represents you. Straight away onto the book. I know we, you're gonna have to make a movie, you've got a busy day, but what would you say is the one thing that you take away from this book actually creating it? Because Fear less I've, and live more. I've just put in my head, like if I was gonna write a book, what I know that I want to take away from it more than I'd want the people reading it to take away from it. Does that make sense? Is yeah. that a weird thing to put for it? Uh, uh, no, like you're no, no, bringing no. a lot of your personal feelings yeah. and putting it on paper. It's quite a- It's a journal it's, almost. It's, it's a very on. weird relationship that somebody has with the book, especially when it's like a passion and something that's life committing for you yeah like it's there forever now it's it, in history <laughs> <laughs> um i think that my book is very open it's very honest and it's very raw account of my life experiences it's not just about snowboarding yes it is for everybody i take elements that i've learned within my snowboarding career and how i've applied them to my life now for example, one is doing my motorbike test for the first time, but I did it after my Olympics. We still haven't got around to do that. We need to do <laughs> ours. We've been talking about it for a while. I the think Olympics would kill me. <laughs> is one moment in your life where there's a lot of pressure and yeah. things can go right or wrong. Your motorbike test, it doesn't matter if you fail it, you could do it a week later. Yeah. You could do it five or six times. There is opportunity. So I think one of the biggest things that I take away from that is just to not be defined by that one moment in life because life will always present you further opportunities if you're open to life's opportunities. And I think the other thing that I love about that is, again, when it comes to time, managing time, creating time for you, finding things that serve you, because if you serve yourself, you can serve others better. And I think that makes for, for me, people are everything. And the exchange of energy is very, very important. Like being here with you guys this morning, I'll walk out of this conversation buzzed up yeah. because yeah. it's been a positive yeah. exchange in energy. So I think that book really shares a lot of tips and advice on how I've managed and juggled the neggy eggs <laughs> that I've met along, my, along yeah. my path and how to surround yourself by positive people that lift you up so you can lift them up. Is the one thing that you would have liked to put in this book that didn't make the edit? Ooh, cracking question, Ooh. AJ. Because mm. like you, you just throw everything down. A bit like we say, you machine gun, you fire things off. Like not everything makes it. And I bet there's still stuff that you never even said or even like, you thought of after you know it. What, you guys, like, it should be in there. There's, there's a lot in there. It's pretty raw. <laughs> um, <laughs> Walking with fear. Okay, I'll ask a question on that. Walking with fear, that, that chapter, that part, what would you say is the hardest thing you spoke about in that part? I'd say the moment I realized I was totally consumed by fear yep. in my snowboarding career. I remember it was the November before my second Olympics and one of the biggest takeaways and life learnings was when I was stood at the top and I was training and I'd been through quite a bit personally in my life. Uh, my nan had just been diagnosed of cancer. I'd split up with my ex-boyfriend of four and a half years. And I stood at the top and I thought, I'm not even fussed to drop in right now. I don't care because this doesn't matter to me. Priorities. But priorities mm. really became very important. And I remember, so I've never had any uh, mental coaching or therapy as such. 
and my physio Alison at the time was like Ames I think you should go and speak to you know the, the team GB um, mental coach yeah. and I was like okay you know what why not let's be open I've never done this and I said to her I can I can analyze and hyper analyze everything I'm very aware of the situation right now I said the problem is in snowboarding everybody snowboards because they want to have fun bro snowboarding's just a fun sport mm. we're out there to just have fun that's what <laughs> that's what every snowboarder says <laughs> bullshit yeah. snowboarding is not fun when it's hard and snowboarding is hard it's not mm. easy it's dangerous if it goes wrong it goes really wrong when it's right it's really fun but i've lost people i loved to the sport it's an incredibly serious and calculated sport and i shared with the therapist i said my only motivation to go to the next olympics is the fact that i think i know what i want to do afterwards and i want to have a career afterwards so most snowboarders would say my motivation is i want to have fun and she confirmed to me it was okay that my short-term motivation was for me to get through this period, this tough chunk of time, to get through this training block, to turn up at the start gate, to compete, so I could carve out a career mm. post Olympics. And yeah. that's one of the most honest things. Mm. Cause I can guarantee you, you will not hear many snowboarders or action sports athletes Talk speak the truth. Yeah. Yeah. The reality is I fell out of love with it and I was fearful. Yeah. How do you get through the fear? Find whatever it is that is gonna motivate you to get through it. And it doesn't matter what that is, because it's personal to yeah, you. Yeah, and you th in, for you, it was longevity. It was, yeah. I want a career. I want, I want to be able to come I mean, out of this and, that's and have like, a lot of things. Yeah. It's it's really, it's quite, thank you for being so open and raw. Like that is, a mm. like, as you say, in extreme sports, certain things aren't talked about. And that's usually one thing that's like, it isn't talked about. I think um, what you did say something there really struck home as well. It's make sure that you try and, if it's your day-to-day -day job, if it's a sport, if it's anything, try and keep mm. the fun and the love there if oh, you want so to important. continue don't doing it don't live under fear people are scared yeah. to like like even when i left strictly i was <clears> like <throat> well i want to leave strictly i want to do other things i want to grow as a person people like within the, even mm. strictly and other careers it's like well i need to um stay with this because this is my job and i need to pay my wage and i need this i need the security well well what well, you there's money everywhere there's jobs everywhere as long as you're willing to work hard you will be able to get a job you can find your passion like just make it happen like don't build barriers and, and make them excuses because they, they do become excuses. And have personally. fun in everything you're doing. Have, have a laugh and joke and don't take it too seriously, I feel. Because when you take things too seriously, then you start to fall out of love sometimes yeah. with it. And being a competitor, it's very hard with that because yeah. you want to become the best. Yes, you want to have fun, but you want to take it as serious as possible. Yeah. And sometimes that can suck the fun out of it. It did with me in the dancing. That's why I fell out of love with the competing side. Yeah. I love the performing side. But the actual competing side, having that seriousness, having to train at home for me was horrible. I really fell out of the love with that side of it. So yeah, and that stopped me from my dancing, to be fair. Oh, I've got so much more I want to talk about. Um, honestly, you know, attack yeah, my flight. Yeah. Yeah. No, honestly, um, so we're going to have to do this again in the future because <clears throat> yeah, there's so definitely. many more facets good, of good your life. Yeah, you there's to loads I want to talk about. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's, there's lots of different parts for sure. Please, um, this this actual podcast here is sponsored by Fint, so it's a financial investment. We've got one question from them, well, us. Um, within school, within actually the Olympic side, were you ever taught about financials, money, like investing like what to do with your money when you had some was money. it ever suggested <laughs> yeah i'll tell you what i did with national my, insurance with my, number yeah. with my first paycheck i went to the maldives yeah so. <laughs> don't do that guys invest and save it no no, um, <laughs> no have fun with it you need to yeah right it's balance yes definitely. don't spend it all but spend a bit yeah i didn't do that with the first paycheck it all went on the maldives trip don't worry my first paycheck that i had was all on something as well <laughs> and they've all been on something to date yeah. honestly no thank you so much amy but please any shout outs to where you can find the book or yourself yeah. or for example please give a shout out for your podcast because yeah. i will be on there at some you, point that's you're for sure. gonna be on there very soon so we can we can revisit this conversation yes. uh the monday mail podcast on spotify and then my book fear less live more which is I believe currently on sale on Amazon, actually. It is, Ooh, it yeah. is. That's what he told me this morning. <laughs> and I love the title, Fear Less, Live More. I think if everybody can just actually live by them rules, yeah. you will live a much more enjoyable life. Fear life, less, life is short. stop overthinking it, 
and live more, Enjoy guys. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Drink lots of coffee. If you like coffee, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm off for my third. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Drink Tell me, I've got my third paddle. after this. <laughs> yeah, honestly, thank you so much. I know you've got a busy day, so we'll let you shoot. That's for sure. Just before we go anywhere, thank you very much for listening to Freedom Impact Trust. We love your feedback, so please do leave a review because it helps others find us, doesn't it, Curtis? Yes, it does. Comment, subscribe, like, share it to a friend. Let everybody in the world know that this is the podcast that you're enjoying and let us know what you loved about it. We enjoy talking to you guys. We enjoy having fun and we can't wait to see you and hear you on the next episode. Plus, we want to thank our sponsor, Fint, the financial investment app, making investing easy from as little as £50 a month. You guys are awesome. We love you. We're part of you. Don't forget, it's all through three portfolios, AJ. Nice and simple. I know. Have a great day. See you later, guys.